Hey guys, it's Jill and it is super freaking windy and I really do apologize. Also, Mama Long Neck is here. <laughs> anyway, today I wanted to show you guys how I tack up a horse. I know that some of my following is maybe more on the beginner side and maybe you've just started taking lessons or you've always had somebody tack up the horse for you and you're not quite sure how exactly that goes. So I am gonna get out my boss's horse. His name is Professor Flitwick, if you're a Harry Potter fan. We call him Flit, she just got him. He is a free sport horse so he's like Frisian thoroughbred I'm going to get him tacked up and then we're gonna go for a ride this is an English tacking up video I've got a jump saddle over here saddle pad a girth and a bridle I don't think he needs a half pad because I'm pretty sure the saddle fits him pretty well if you are not sure if your saddle fits your horse please 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 be sure to have a saddle fit professional check it because saddle fit is so 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 important I don't know this horse so I'm gonna have to go through a little extra process of checking but saddle fit is is super super important as this is a beginner video I thought I would just cover all the bases because if your saddle doesn't fit your horse then he's probably not gonna enjoy the ride as much as you are if the saddle also doesn't fit you you're not going to enjoy it either if you're like coming out the back of it or if you're being restricted by it or you can't get your stirrups up high enough you know there are endless things so make sure you have a saddle fitter just like every now and again just check and see if you're matching up okay I'm gonna go get flit and we're gonna rock and roll Guys, this is Flit. He is absolutely stunning. I'm gonna first groom him and show you guys kind of what that looks like for me, and then we'll get tacked up. So first things first, my boss just bought this little handy dandy thing. It's called strip hair. Hashtag not sponsored. I freaking love it for getting off dirt and extra hair. It's such a like soft tool as compared to like a curry comb. The next is a dandy brush. This one is a little softer since he's not super dirty. I'm just gonna get the top dot, dark, top dot, top dirt, top dirt. Always brush in the direction of the hair so you can see it goes this way and then it goes this way and then back again. So next is hoof picking. I have a little hoof pick with a little brush. I'm just gonna ask him to pick up his feet. ever. Now it's time to throw the saddle on. I am going to check and see what I think of the saddle fit here. If you guys don't recognize it, this used to be my saddle, but my boss bought it from me. I'm just going to throw it up on his back without a pad so I can see how it fits on his back. It actually fits him pretty, pretty thinking well, in my opinion. So you see I set the saddle pad on with this little thing right here and the purpose of that is to put either one or both billets through. That keeps the saddle pad from slipping around. If you're going to pull the saddle pad forward at all, make sure you pull the whole thing and then slide it back so that you don't pull the horse's hair the opposite direction and then you can rock it a little bit so it settles where it should on the horse's back. So this is called an anatomic girth. The reason it is is because it's shaped. So these are, think of them as armpit cutouts. It would go on with the big bump facing him. So he's got armpit clearance. Also something to keep in mind about girths is you want them to be pretty even on both sides. So I have it on one on the other side and three on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the other side out. Do note if your horse is uncomfortable with being girthed, whether he like bites or pins his ears or gets kind of a nasty expression going, could have an underlying issue like ulcers, back pain, saddle doesn't fit, he doesn't like his girth, or he's anticipating a ride that he doesn't like. There are endless reasons for why horses are girthy, but if you rule out all of the pain issues, then you can use a form of training called positive reinforcement training to counter condition the girth so that the girth becomes a good thing that the horse is like because if the girth is a predictor of pain then they're gonna be like don't put that on me I've done it with a few horses after we rolled out ulcers we got them chiropractic and massage therapists work done on them after we knew they were sound and good to go I started using positive reinforcement to make the girth a good thing I have a podcast all about that so check out equine in theory and the episode I believe is episode number seven called behavioral issues and positive reinforcement solutions or plus bar so take that out shameless plug the time for bridling is now this is a boucher voucher pronounced many different ways but it's a french link we have a crank nose band but me and his owner both prefer that the crank be rather loose we don't like to clamp our horses faces down so you just want to make sure that your bridle is even all around you might have to do some adjustments while it's on the horse's face that is the easiest way to adjust a bridle to a horse so i always put the reins over the head first so that we 
wind is in fact too high, so I'm going to have to lower it again. You just get this situated on your face. So with a crank, you just take the bottom part, feed it through the little loop there, loop it back. I'm not a fan of nose bands in the first place, and you can fight me on that. I just don't think they're necessary. If they're going to be on, I make them rather loose so they're just more for aesthetic purposes which also I have opinions on. <laughs> I like to keep them rather loose so the horse has more freedom of their jaw. You know if a rider were to pull on them and they needed to open their mouth because maybe the pressure was a little bit too much from the rider's hand then I think that that is absolutely justified and they should be allowed to do that. Whereas if your nose band's too tight they can't get away from the pressure and they just have to deal with it and I don't like that. So. That's my two cents on that. <laughs> it's an unpopular opinion that I have, but whatever. So now I've done his throat latch. As you can see here, his nose band is done up. It's pretty loose and he is tacked up and ready to go. So we're not jumping today. We're just gonna flat and uh, yeah, come along. I know it kind of had an abrupt ending. I ended up having to help a lady that we've been working with out here give Rosie a bath. I kind of had to like hurry up and finish with Flit. But yeah, that's pretty much how you tack up a horse. English. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed and learned something new. Maybe a little different way to do things. I don't know. Maybe a little tip, a little trick, a little fun fact. I don't know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out the Equine and Theory podcast available on all listening platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and more. Check me out on Instagram at Jet Equitheory. My website, www.jetequitheory.com. We have available horses listed, my blog, positive reinforcement information and resources, everything you can need and more. Give that a check out and uh, I will see you guys in the next video.